How's it everybody and welcome to another recording of Total War Warhammer. Uh, my name is Syke and I'll be taking you through this game. Now, um, we've basically, we're currently waiting for the Wood Elves to release. So I've decided just to do some uh, kind of try hard games again. Um, where I really, really, really try and build armies that should theoretically win against whatever my um, opponent has selected. And I haven't done Bretonia in quite a while, and some of you guys may, may recognize this army. I played something very similar to this um, in a series once before uh, that was called Leadership Ain't Nothing But a Thang. So if we just look at the army very quickly, I've got four squads of the uh, Peasant Bowmen, I've got six squads of the uh, Spearmen at Arms with the Shields, then I have three squads of the uh, men at arms with the pole arms. I then have two paladins and both of these paladins come out with deadly onslaught, the potion of toughness, and uh, that's it. They're on foot. We have one trebuchet. This trebuchet currently has two rings. We have a damsel and the only thing she's supposed to do is cast curse of the midnight winds. Now she does have um, the uh, rolling skies which is really useful and then she has arcane conduit and she has another ability which i just unticked as i didn't feel it was necessary here against the green skins and then of course there's the trebuchet and then the last paladin is over here same stuff as the previous one i just like their models they're pretty cool um over here we have two squads of grail knights stock standard grail knights and we have one lord of britonia and he is also very basic he's only got the um Blessings of the Lady, uh, Passion of Toughness, Deadly Onslaught, and Stand Your Ground. And that is it. That is it for our army. Now, I decided to take Bretonia because my opponent was a Greenskins opponent, and recently I've started to think that Bretonia does fairly well against Greenskins. They typically take a lot of units that doesn't have armor, and that's just perfect for the infantry. That's also perfect for the Peasant Bowmen, and it's also perfect for the Ground Knights, who doesn't have armor piercing. So it's just it's just a good army. Beastmen and uh, Greenskins feel like good armies to take on with Bretonia. Now for my uh, Greenskins opponent, he had one squad of the Goblin Wolf Riders, uh, Vanguard deployed here on the side, so he was obviously trying to go around uh, in case there was some uh, ranged units in the back or perhaps a trebuchet or two. Now, for his army, he's got one, two, three, four, five squads of the regular Orc boys. He's got three squads of the Goblin Archers. I think one of them was Night Goblins, yeah. So two Goblin Archers and then a Night Goblin Archer. He's got one uh, Orc Shaman and the Shaman has a couple of spells, foot of Gork. Uh, most notably, uh, here we go, and uh, Fists of Gork. Those are the notable ones. He then actually took two Doom Diver catapults and he took the Hammer of Gork, uh, 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 Rock Lobber, which was interesting because. Um, uh, if I didn't take an infantry-based army, now, okay, fair enough, most Bretonians will have a lot of infantry, but if we didn't go for it, then this would not have worked out too well. He also has two of the Goblin Big Bosses, both of which has the Potion of Full Hardiness and the Potion of Toughness, one over there and one more over there. He has the uh, Orc Boar Boy Biggins Regiment of Renown, which is uh, those guys, and he brought Scarsnake with quite a lot of things. He's got the Y, he's got Stand Your Ground, he's got uh, the... Let me just get him in the picture there and go. Okay, and he's got a uh, spot of the bad moon. He's got Trixie traps and he's got the Prada, which is the magic missile. And that's it for the armies. Okay, so as you can imagine, this game is going to open up with a lot of artillery fire from the green skins opponent. Um, and we just have to weather the storm. Now, um, the reason why, uh, and a lot of people do this and they're not, uh, I, I don't know if they know really why they want to do this. But if you're expecting artillery fire, you kind of want to deploy your guys in very, very, very thin, long, like thin wide lines. Because artillery can go any which way, but most of the time it's either going to hit in front or hit at the back. And uh, I could have spaced my guys a little bit better, um, but then it just becomes too hard to manage to see enough stuff on the screen. So, yes, he is opening up on the Peasant Bowman, which is a good target to go for as they do howls that they, they, they do massive amounts of damage uh to any guys that's unarmored and uh majority of this army is unarmored so our rock lover is trying to just soften up the archers a little bit because we might have some trouble getting to them but the goblin doom divers and the rock lover they're just going ape here they are shooting the crap out of our poor little bretonian men they are just not happy so over here what i managed to do is uh, i managed to get these guys around 
um, which is really what I wanted to do. So I wanted to get them around, and I wanted to see if I couldn't get there. But at the very least, if he brings all of these guys down, uh, just having one anti-cav cav, I wasn't too worried about it. So I thought, you know what, we could probably just take them in a head-on fight. And that's exactly what we're trying to do over here. So we're going to charge into them over here. And uh, yes, there we go. All right, so much fun was had by everyone. And then, of course, he is going to try and cast some spells over here with the Shaman, which is on the way. There we go. And that was a foot of Gorok. Sorry, guys. I just caught the last second of it. He did okay damage here. He didn't do uh, nothing. He got three kills from that. And those are cavalry kills. So um, I saw these guys on the minimap while I was looking at it. I just decided not to bother with them. Um, there was not much point in trying to save them with this like at this juncture so we've got a curse of the midnight wind going off into majority of the orc boys it is touching most of them and what's also nice about having the very long line is we managed to get some of our guys uh to wrap around the green skins at this point so i'm pulling one squad out and then i'm charging back in then i'm pulling another squad at this point in time we pulled everything out and we tried to see if we couldn't just get another uh cycle charge going up there the trebuchet is still firing but these little goblin bastards they're gonna get there soon and uh yeah so they are gonna get to us i believe that um yeah okay so curse of the midnight wind is still going up the shaman where is he no he's not costing anything that might just be a glitch let's see yeah i don't know i don't know what's going on there so but yeah what i wanted to do is to actually pull them around and run all the way around to get to the doom divers but i saw he had a uh, goblin big boss out of position so i thought this target is just too juicy to ignore so i rather change my targets into the goblin big boss and i just try to kill him as fast as possible over here you can see some of our guys uh, some of our uh, men at arms They've made contact with the uh, archers, and we've got a paladin in here, which is also fighting the good fight for us. And uh, then over here, we are starting to win the fight. You can see we've got a lot of health left. We've got more squads down here uh, than our opponent has. But unfortunately, our prison bowmen are taking massive shots. The goblin bullfighters have started to move now. And even though there are some peasant bowmen here, they are getting reassigned um, all over the place. So, yeah, they're not really going to help much over here. So you can see over here, they are going to charge into our uh, field trebuchet, and they're going to take it out. Uh, that's pretty much all she wrote. So I managed to get one of the Goblin Big Bosses over here. Um, he actually ended up falling, and then these guys started pushing forward up towards the uh, Goblin Doom Divers, and of course towards the... Uh, the rock lobber and then over here um i've got a paladin running out that's going to start challenging the um the uh scar sneak as well i felt like i needed more guys over here so one of the paladins broke the lines and he's running all the way through and then the other paladin he's still supporting these guys over here trying to help them uh just just you know just just break this flank on this side we can see now we have a lot of things going off we've got war going off we've got spite of the bad moon going off over here um, I believe the damsel was on her way at this point in time to also try and cast the spell over here. And uh, yeah, so our lord is doing very well. We're actually pushing the uh, orc shaman out at this point in time. We've got uh, Curse of the Midnight Winds going off. And uh, yeah, so the goblin big boss has taken a lot of damage. Scarsnick has taken a lot of damage over here on this flank. We've managed to bring the paladin in and he's just killing doom divers and all kinds of things over here. Uh, with the spearmen at arms, they're also fighting there. And you can see over here, we've basically pushed through his entire line. We've won this battle. We've left one guy behind to fight there. Uh, these guys are moving back. They're going to go and support. <clears throat> but yeah, these goblins are still really a pain in the neck. We need to get to them because they do a lot of damage. Um, but right now, we just don't have anything spare to get there. Uh, and we are focusing on Scar Snake a little bit. We do want to get him killed. Uh, he, once he breaks, we might get some awesome chain uh, shatters or chain breaks at least. So that would be pretty cool. And then over here, what we decided to do was our peasant bowmen has finally made their way forward. Now these goblin wolf riders are still ripping us apart from the from the back. But at this point in time, it, it didn't matter all that much. And with these guys scattered all over the place as they were, I thought it would just be you know a good uh, way to keep me busy rather than trying to focus and save everything. So over here, again, the Goblin Big Boss is almost uh, dying. Scarsnick is very close to dying. We've got some squads rallying over here, and soon we will split off some of our squads here to just start chasing them away. And there you can see. So we're charging out with our uh, uh, knights, and then the moment when they get there, these guys start shattering, and everybody just starts shattering, and there we go. All right, so we managed to get a, a fairly decent victory, a close victory uh, over our green skin opponent. It was an interesting game because I felt he had a lot of problems that I needed to deal with and being a um, 
a foot slugger army or more an infantry based army it was quite tough to do um, i was very impressed though um, with how the lord and two squads of ground knights managed to hold up against skarsnik uh, the goblin big boss at times two goblin big bosses and the shaman and of course the uh, regiment of renown the uh, orc boar boy biggins which is called uh, what are they the, the mobbers the <clears throat> there we go the broken tusks mob um, and they held up fairly well as expected let's look at our opponents um, kill count at the end of the game as expected the artillery blah, artillery did very well uh, doomed arbor catapult got 73 the other doomed arbor catapult got 67 and then 59 that's not bad uh, 19 on these guys but they were fighting ground knights so you know it's not bad these guys got 40 kills so they were doing a good job just dismantling the trebuchet and then the peasant bowman you can see here the peasant bowman is supposed to be one of the things that do the most damage in this game and they just never got the chance they were just chased around by everything uh of course the night goblin are just doing very well and then the orc boys didn't do two exceptional two squads did well 53 and 50 uh but the the leadership structure here is pretty much where it fell apart uh they didn't get a lot of kills over here on the bretonian side we have 24 kills on the damsel 42 on one of our paladins 40 41 51 41 41 45 63 so it's pretty much it's spread all over the place 37 on the trebuchet 17 and 9. so again uh this is a interesting Britannian army for me because we do use now um like i said uh, <clears throat> britannia for me the infantry they're above average for their cost, but the leadership is keeping them back. And again, this army is a lot of fun to play. It's a lot of micromanagement though, because it's literally a full contingent uh, that you bring into the to the fight. But it's it's pretty fun to play, and if you can manage, if you can manage to manage them properly, uh, of course, then then they're doing really well. Guys, that's it for this game, uh, for the try hard game that I did with Bretonia. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate every view that I get. Remember, if you like the comment on this channel, please subscribe to the channel. That helps me a lot. Leave a comment, leave a like. That's fantastic. So, guys, I'm going to see you for the next recording. Um, but until then, bye-bye.